Well, I'm delighted to say that uh, joining me on the Godcast is Henry Normal now. Henry is a writer, poet, TV and film producer. He was the founder of the Manchester Poetry Festival and uh, also the co-founder of the Nottingham Poetry Festival. Henry will be known for his uh, work in television where he uh, was honoured with a BAFTA uh, for services to TV. And uh, he also set up Baby Cow Productions with Steve Coogan in the late 90s. So Henry, it's brilliant to get you on the Godcast. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and, and you're um, you're just about to go on tour, aren't you? Is this uh, is this an exciting time for you, or, or, or full of trepidation? No, I, I'm excited. Um, I uh, this is my biggest ever tour, and uh, really as a solo tour doing theatres, this is um, this is my first. So uh, you know at the uh, grand old age of, uh, I, I, I'm almost a pensioner. I would have been a pensioner if they'd not uh, swizzled me. Uh, um, <laughs> right, okay. So uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. We, we've we've sort of been on an adventure, haven't we, the last uh, year and a half of, um, uh, you know, staying at home and sort of exploring the home space and exploring family. And uh, I've really enjoyed that. But uh, I think, like most people, I'm I'm ready to. Uh, uh, look out into the world and see what's beyond. Yeah, and you've 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 got a very defined accent, Henry. There, the Nottingham twang, but uh, but you, you you're living down in Brighton. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, funnily enough, I, um, I don't. Of course, you don't really notice your own accent. I, I lived in uh, Manchester for fifteen years. I lived in uh, Hull for five years and uh, Chesterfield. So I, I tend to think of my accent as being sort of Doncaster Station. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's got that roundabout sort of uh, uh, northern feel to it. I was once described as a um, uh, local boy everywhere north of Derby. Doncaster, how beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and well, you, I've, you, I've been up to Bur Burnley Mechanics many times. I know yeah. you're from, uh, from Burnley. Yeah. And uh, I, do you know, I love all the, um, the regional accents and uh, mm. Burnley's a, a particular one. I, I had a, a, a friend who was a girl who was uh, from Burnley uh, and um, very pretty. And so uh, uh, this Burnley accent coming out of a very pretty young girl was, was um, uh, always tickled me slightly. I shall, I shall share that with my two beautiful daughters and wife <laughs> later on this afternoon. <laughs> but you're, you're, you're not far from Burnley, are you? You're up in Darwin. That's where the kind of you get things underway up here. I am. I'm, I'm at the Darwin uh, Library. So uh, th this weekend, so uh, I'm at uh, Sale, uh, um, so near the airport there. Uh, um, uh, then uh, Darwin. Uh, no, Darwin Sunday. Uh, um, yeah, Sunday, darling. Yeah, be, you'll be working. Um, and Saturday's uh, Morecambe, but we've sold out in Morecambe, so there's no point in going there. Yeah. Uh, and, and what so can people? That, that, that's the level I've got to. I'm sold out in Morecambe. <laughs> um, they, they, they call it the West End, so I've actually I can say I've sold out in the West End. <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure you're not the last person who sold out in Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> so where? Um, so what can people expect, Henry? I mean, you're you're a man of uh, many talents and uh, and and uh, a great kind of back catalogue. What what can people expect when they come and see a show? Well, um, I like to do uh, jokes and poems and stories and mix them all up. And I like to do uh, funny things and serious things. I, I like uh, the whole of human life in there. Um, there's a little bit of uh, um, philosophy. There's a little bit of uh, uh, spirituality, I would say. Uh, there's a little bit of... Uh, everything in there um it's sort of uh, it's an hour and a half and i like to sort of give people a, um, a, a sort of a um a, a roller coaster ride of emotions is is the way i look at it mm. yeah and 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 just um talking about poetry henry where did your kind of interest begin with poetry can you can you remember what what it oh, was yeah, that yeah, to join it vivid, vividly so uh, my mum died when i was 11 she died in a car crash and uh, I, I became very withdrawn and uh, I started reading a lot. Now, I read lots of comedy books. So I read uh, everything from uh, James Thurber and, um, you know, Offnung and all those uh, ones that you get in the library in the, in the dusty books uh, um, and to Monty Python, who were very new at the time, and uh, Spike Milligan. And uh, I came across a book of Spike Milligan's, which I thought was a comedy book, which was called uh, Small Dreams of a Scorpion. And it turned out to be a book of serious poems and uh, it made me cry several times. 
And uh, I love the fact that somebody so funny could also move me. Yeah. So, um, you know, that uh, really uh, opened my eyes. And then I went to the library and I got out of all the books I could. Uh, so obviously the Liverpool poets were, uh, um, uh, you know, very influential. Um, Adrian Mitchell, uh, who I always thought of as being sort of very akin to the Liverpool poets, um, sort of around the 60s and... Uh, is very accessible in his work. Um, but I tried every, uh, you know, I, everything from, uh, you know, uh, sort of the Russian poets uh, to, you know, uh, sort of uh, all the uh, poets down right back to Chaucer. I, I give them a go, but not not everything appealed to me. I, I think there's a, this weird thing with poetry that we think uh, it's uh, one thing. Uh, you know, you'd never say I like all music, you know, uh, um, or all painting. Or, or, you know, as an art form, there's lots of different styles. If you think of music, you know, you've got jazz, uh, classical, uh, you know, uh, pop, rock, um, you know, lots of different styles. And I think with poetry, there's lots of different styles as well. So um, I found um, the sort of uh, poems that meant something to me. And um, in the early days, very often it was the Jonathan Cape uh, uh, books because Jonathan Cape was a, a new publisher at the time in the 60s. And they always had a photograph on the front of their books and they looked very modern. Uh, and when you open the pages, there was, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, it, it was talking about a world that I understood and I knew. Yeah. And, and did you ever or have you ever kind of... Um read through the Psalms, uh, you know, talking about historical kind of... Well, I know I've, I've read uh, I've read several bits of the Bible. Uh, and my real name's Peter, so I, I tried to read uh, uh, the Old of Peter, uh, um, uh, you know, which uh, is interesting. I've, I've read the uh, the Gospels um, in my youth. I, I went to um, uh, uh, sort of Sunday school. Uh, um, uh, I could tell you a little bit about that if you like. Yeah, tell uh, us, tell and, us. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, obviously, some of the Psalms. I mean, there's some beautiful poetry in in the in the Bible, and um, I think the use of uh, imagery and the use of uh, metaphor in, in the Bible um, is brilliant. I mean, we might get into con some contentious issues, but I'm very happy to uh, to explore it. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I try not to get too theological on these on these matters, but I, I was more interested about. You know whether you know because I I feel the the psalms are quite beautiful in places. They're very complex and difficult in others, but um, you know, and I still think they're quite useful for today's society as well. You know, just thinking about the twenty third psalm, "The Lord is my shepherd," which uh, well, I've got to say that is, you know, I mean, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find uh, a bit of poetry uh, uh, as beautiful as that and as mm -hmm. long lasting. I would say I would say that's better. You know, they 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 took a vote and people said. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, words with uh, um, uh, daffodils was yeah. the, the most popular one. I would, I would say that's better than uh, uh, words with daffodils. Most people only remember the first couple of lines of, uh, of, of words with, uh, um, you know, sort of uh, daffodils. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think daffodils are golden, to be honest with you. I think the yellow, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, um, I, I've never seen any golden ones, uh, you know, it's stretching it a bit. Whereas uh, I, th I think, uh, I think um, the, the Lord is my shepherd is, uh, uh, is beautifully written mm. and uh, tight and efficient and, and memorable. Mm. Um, to write a poem that's as good as that, you know, it would be any poet's dream. Uh, if you think, think about it, when we think of most poets, we only usually think of one or two poems. You know, if I, you mention anybody like uh, Byron, uh, people only uh, uh, really remember um, She Walks in Beauty with the Night. Uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the longer stuff people, you know, for the vast majority are not familiar with. And it's similar with with other poets. You, you know, if you mention a poet, it's usually one poem that mm. stands out. I actually think that's quite encouraging because I, I do like I do like poems, but I can't name hundreds of poems by po poets. But there are ones, you know, I'll. You mentioned Spike Milligan. Um, you know, I, I love the words of Leonard Cohen, who obviously put most of it to to to, yeah. to song. But I think that's quite encouraging to say. You know, you know, because I think there's a, there's an element of snobbery attached to to poetry. Would you agree that people think, oh, you know, it's only for I, I the think, elite? Yeah, I think I think there is, and it, it's um, when you think about it, it's quite ridiculous. Uh, um, it's you know, if you say any art form is for the elite. Um, I, I mean, there's you know, I've got a painting behind me that's done by my son. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, some people might say poetry is elite. 
he paints every day. Uh, um, you know, it's not elite. He enjoys the act of painting. And, and I think you can enjoy um, all the art forms at a personal level. Um, it's th There are uh, people who would try to make money and uh, prestige out of something that would like you to think that various art forms are, are elite, but um, I don't think they are. And certainly poetry has, uh, has suffered a little bit from this idea that it's, it's for others. Yeah. Um, when I, you know, I mean, you think of um, uh, uh, Burns, you know, he's got his own night. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's pretty popular. Uh, um, and he wrote some some lovely, you know, uh, um, poem to a, a wee uh, a mousy. And uh, you know, he wrote some lovely uh, mm. things that that um, that you couldn't in any way say were uh, elitist. Yeah. Shakespeare, Shakespeare stuff. I mean, uh, I, maybe some people think Shakespeare is uh, inaccessible. I've, I've always loved uh, both his plays. And uh, I mean, he only wrote, uh, I don't know whether you know, 158 poems. Uh, um, you know, so uh, it's not like he, uh, he wrote masses. No. Uh, you probably get them in a, a small pamphlet these yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. Henry, I was struck by what you said a few minutes ago about uh, Spike Milligan. Um, with his ability to kind of make you laugh um, and, and then be so beautiful and make you cry. And I wondered, um, is that the, uh, the true skill of, of comedy? I, 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 my daughter came down from her bedroom last night. She's in her late teens and she was crying. And I said, why are you crying? She said, I've just watched an episode of the, the office, the American office. And um, she said, but it, but I'm crying, but it was really good. And uh and I said, and I, I happened to say, I said, I think that's that's what you call great comedy that has that ability to to take you to those places. Would, would you concur with that? Or well, I've spent uh, much of my adult life working in comedy, and uh, I think uh, there's a beautiful thing about comedy is that we only laugh um, when we like somebody. We give ourselves over to people uh, when we laugh. It's a, it's an act of uh, friendship, an act of communion, and and I love that. Um, when I was uh, in uh, my uh, teens, I read um, Freud's jokes in their relation to the unconscious, which is quite a big, thick book, and uh, a lot of it's, uh, it's sort of, you know, sort of uh, obviously it's German, so uh, the the humour is not necessarily translate. But um, the gist of it, as far as I could gather, was he was saying that we laugh because we are tricked, and and uh, the trick of it is to um, expose that we are imperfect and we laugh at our imperfection uh, and come to terms with it. And I, I think that's such a beautiful thing uh, about laughter and, and, uh, and humour. If you think in, in the, and I'm sure you've come across this, in the most tragic situations, we can find humour and it helps us come to terms with it. So um, I like to think uh, over the course of my career that, um, that aspect of um, uh, helping us come to terms with our imperfection, uh, you know, is a, uh, you might say it's a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a good community um, uh, sort of enterprise that we, that we all do that. And, uh, you know, it stops us from either coming, up, coming on as the big I am or, uh, or, or fading into the background and not, not being able to do anything. There's a, you know, a, a, a way of, an healthy way of um, understanding that you're imperfect, but that, that's good enough. Henry, I want to just um, ask you about um, your, your kind of entry into comedy. How, how did that evolve for, for you as, as, a, as somebody on a career path? Well, I, um, I, I thought when I left school that I needed to get a proper job, as my dad would call it. Um, and I went to the career office and they said, well, well there's two options for you. Because uh, uh, my dad worked at Rally and my uh, brother worked at Rally. But, but I managed to get a few old levels and whatever. And they, and they said, um, uh, it's banking or insurance. And I thought, oh, God. Uh, um, uh, banking sounds like there's, when there's only 10 uh, um, uh, numbers that you know you keep uh, changing uh, I thought uh, that's a bit boring I'm going insurance so I became an insurance broker but by the age of uh, 20 um, so I started at 17 by the age of 20 
uh, I'd become the manager of the, uh, the whole branch of this insurance brokers that I joined. Um, and so it was quite a responsibility and I'd worked hard and uh, um, uh, I, I was in a position where I was talking to people who were in the 50s because I was talking to the bosses of the other insurance companies. Uh, and because we were a small, young uh, company, uh, you know, I, I said I'd managed to, to rise so fast. But there I was in the mid 70s. Um, I got all my furniture uh, in my little uh, flat up in the hall. Um, I got, you know, my knives in the knife bit and my forks in the fork bit and, and, and I was sort of set for life. And if I, when I went out of the house, uh, when I came back, it was exactly as it was. Uh, and it was, a, and, and I thought to myself, this is all, um, I've become old very quickly. And uh, punk happened and uh, new wave. And uh, there was a, a song called Too Much Too Young. And I thought they're trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to see a film called Animal House. I, I don't think many people will have been moved by the, uh, the film Animal House with uh, John Belushi, but it struck me that they were having fun. Uh, and these were people that, although they were acting like teenagers, they were actually older than me. So um, I thought, well, maybe, you know, life should be uh, fun and uh, an adventure and not just, you know, responsibility. So uh, I basically retired from insurance uh, and um, went to live with my elder sister, Linda, uh, and um, I started writing. And, uh, you know, if, if I hadn't have done that, then, you know, I, I may have been insurance for the rest of my life. But uh, I took a I took a gamble, yeah. and um, uh, you know I was lucky that I had somewhere to go, and uh, you know my elder sister would look after me, um, and uh, she would type up everything that I wrote, um, and uh, you know so I have her to thank, uh, and and um, many other people uh, for having had a career in uh, the creative side of uh, the world. Yeah, it's so interesting listening to that. I mean, I used to write a lot of comedy when I was a younger guy, and and I've it I've it all in the loft, and but and it and it never happened for me. So, but clearly it happened for you. What was what was your kind of? Well, I used to write loads of uh, um, uh, ideas, and I'd write any idea. So I wrote. This is absolutely true. Uh, hand on heart, uh, I wrote five chapters of a novel where a museum came to life at night. I wish I'd have kept that. <laughs> uh, I might have been able to sue uh, the franchise, wouldn't I? Um, and uh, I, I wrote, uh, oh, I wrote comic strips and mm. uh, um, um, poems and uh, um, sketches and everything. And I, I'd keep sending them off. And I'd do a thing where I'd send it off somewhere. Uh, and I got like a, the um, uh, a writer, an artist yearbook. And I'd, I'd, I'd look up a, uh, an address and I'd send it off. And then I'd write an envelope to the next one I'm going to send it off before it came back. And then when it came back, I'd stick it straight in the envelope and send it off again. Because my thought was, nobody's going to come and knock on my door. No. Unless it's out there, uh, you know, um, uh, trying. And, and so I, I wrote and wrote and wrote for about two years. And I saw um, two poets. I saw um, uh, John Cooper Clark uh, up in uh, the lead mill. And uh, he was playing to a packed audience and they were quite young. And I thought, oh my God, this is like rock and roll, but somebody, somebody's reading off a bit of paper. I thought, well, I, I can read off a bit of paper. I've, I've got the, uh, you know, the, the bravery to, to stand up there and, you know, and, and give it a go. Um, and, um, and I saw uh, uh, Roger McGough uh, uh, reading um, Summer with Monica. Uh, um, which, you know, obviously is, is a, a series of love poems. And I thought, well, the, you know, this, this, this seems like you can make a living doing this. Uh, I'll give this a go. So I, I, would, uh, I would go uh, on the stage. And of course, I didn't have a great deal of material at the time. But um, I think the first one I got paid £30. Uh, and I read probably about four poems. And I remember thinking, this, that's not bad odds you know seven pound fifty a poem uh, um you know i can i can write more of these mm -hmm. and uh, and so I, I worked my way up a bit by bit to doing like uh, you know 20 minutes then then an hour uh, and uh, and then i went to edinburgh with a show 
and um, and I got spotted by the TV people in Edinburgh. But it was a it was a long old journey. Um, you know, yeah. um, probably uh, eight years. Something like that. I think it's a great lesson for people. I mean, I. I didn't do those things you said. I sent them off, and, I, and once I got a couple of rejection letters, I kind of thought, well, it must be crap. <laughs> I suppose that's what I thought. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's you, great. You know, perseverance, uh, mm. stamina, uh, um, the stubbornness uh, to, to not give up is, I think, one of the, the keys. Um, I, I knew that I could write something funny, um, and I'm not a very good uh, actor. Uh, but I knew that I could read something and I could say something. And there's a sort of um, drive that, you, that uh, I'm sure you have to have. Uh, so every, every person that I've met who is uh, a creative, um, what I've found, and I've, I've, I've been in television for 30 years, I've, I've met quite a few. What I found is that at some point in their childhood or at some point in their teenage years, um, they've stepped back and stopped um, sort of living in the present and, and being sort of the center of the world. And, and they've stepped back and looked at the world and tried to understand it and tried to understand their placing it. Uh, and, and the creativity is part of a conversation of trying to understand their, their place in the world. And certainly uh, say with my uh, mum dying in a car crash at the age of 11, I can trace back that, um, uh, journey for me and um, if you look at Glastonbury and you see all the people jumping up and down in the middle of Glastonbury there's no writers there all the writers are on the side trying to understand why these people are jumping up and down uh, they you know uh, I, I think um, all creativity is is a conversation with yourself uh, about the world and uh, and other people eavesdrop yeah it's, it's fascinating stuff um, comedy is just my favorite thing outside of my work and 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 goodness me henry you work with two of my two of my very favorite people in carolina hearn and and mr coogan just yeah. tell me about caroline henry how did you meet her and did you did you how long did it take for you to recognize her uh, skill and her craft was it did it come quite quickly for you you've got to remember that we're all young at the time so nobody knew that anybody was going to have a career mm. we were just all experimenting of course the, the old idea of uh, uh, what people call alternative comedy back in in those days but doing something different and new uh, um, was it was all in its infancy and there weren't really any comedy clubs you know uh, um, so I, I, I got up to Manchester and um, uh, there was a great sense of community amongst all the other uh, acts and people would uh, do gigs with um, uh, singer songwriters and uh, jugglers and magicians uh, and uh, poets and comedians and actors and and, and it was a big mix they're, 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 you know so so you uh, it, it wasn't there was the money side of it was nobody thought they were going to actually earn any money from it it was about um trying to find something and um, we weren't quite sure what we we're trying to find so the first time i saw caroline uh, was she was doing a um a character that um, not many people have seen called mitzi goldberg which was a jewish country and western singer so she was dressed up like uh, tammy winnett uh, uh, who she later met, funnily enough, uh, and um, and she was belting out these uh, comedy songs and and doing little sort of uh, uh, bits uh, in between the songs, um, and she had a, a, a bloke behind her uh, playing the guitar who never spoke and he got a very droll thing, and um, I thought it was hilarious, and uh, then she started doing the uh, Mrs. Merton character, um, and uh, we did uh, lots of gigs together. And um, we all uh, as knew each other because we'd all go to each other's uh, gigs. So, uh, you know, Dave Gorman was very young at the time. He was starting off. I mean, Steve was only 19 when I first met him. So he, he was the only character he was doing was Duncan Thicket at right, the yeah. time. So uh, when I first met Steve, he was, he was doing the impressions and he, he could do basically any voice. He never did the face or anything. He'd just do the voice and he, he could do my voice. 
within a couple of uh, minutes and it could, uh, it could probably do uh, everybody's voice got a great uh, ear for, um, uh, for for that sort of thing and um, so he would do um, uh, sort of uh, his impressions and then he started doing Duncan Thicket as a character and then the second character he did was uh, what became Paul Calf he was I think it was called David Ear to start right. off with uh, and um, uh, I think he borrowed his brother's jacket and rolled the sleeves up uh, and just pretended to be a bit drunk um, and uh, I know he played the um, Nelson Mandela building in Manchester uh, student building and um, he got booed off and, and he had to take his wig off and say look I'm doing a character <laughs> and then he put it back on and carried on with his act <laughs> and 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 just um I mean, Mrs. Merton was just gold, wasn't it? And was that a hard sell to uh, to the BBC, uh, Henry? Or, well, or it, we did a pilot for Granada first, uh, so it was a regional pilot first, and then uh, BBC took it up after that. And um, we got Dave Gorman writing on it, uh, and uh, Craig Cash, and myself, and Caroline. So there's four, you know, people who you know became uh, sort of professional comic writers. Uh, and, and performers uh, over the years. Uh, so um, it had that, and Caroline uh, herself was brilliant at ad living. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and a great performer. So uh, it, it wasn't too odd. Uh, it was the, the odd thing was to get the royal family uh, there because they didn't understand it. Um, yeah. You know, they, didn't understand, they thought we were being too miserable. Uh, didn't realize that, that that's what we're like in the North, uh, um, it's, it's love. Yeah, uh, um, not misery, uh, and um, uh, but uh, we were sufficiently as a team uh, uh, resolved, and uh, and Caroline was sufficiently funny that um, that we got it made. Similar with Steve, uh, you know, um, in the, in the early days, of course, he you know he, he did the Coogan's Run, which was five different characters, mm -hmm. and um, sorry, six different characters. And uh, um, we did Tony Farino and, uh, and Paul Calf. We were trying things. It was all about experimenting and seeing what worked. Yeah. And, and just um, give us a window into the royal family, Henry, because I mean, talking about the brilliance of, of crying and laughing at the same time, I can think of so many royal family episodes. But just give us a window into that when you got together and said, right, we've got this idea. I mean, it's... On paper, it sounds very dull, doesn't it? People sat in the lounge <laughs> being miserable, but well, yeah, was, uh, maybe. But 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 it was it, oh, it was just so good. It was so good. Just tell us about how it how it. Well, you've got, you got to remember that it was a reaction to what was on at the time. So uh, at the time, the sitcoms were getting very contrived. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it was a little bit, if you think about music, how music can be overproduced, and then you have something that's a bit raw. Uh, and so if you think about the, the royal family, what we did was is we took it right back. So there was no plot devices. Uh, um, you know, it was essentially half an hour of a working class family. Uh, and uh, if you made a cup of tea, then uh, that would take as long as it takes to make a cup of tea. And it was all done in real time. Mm. And um, the, the idea was that, you know, I mean, it's the first time you've probably seen anybody watching telly on the telly. Now that's bonkers, isn't it? Uh, um, I do remember when we arrived at the set, um, <coughs> the, the set designers, um, uh, if you remember, it's a terraced house, uh, um, they'd put a little platform up where the door is. And we said, well, what, what, what's that? Uh, and they said, uh, well, you know, like uh, in Fraser, uh, you, you know, you come in, you, you know, you can see everybody at the door and then you come down. I said, no, 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 no. Have you not been in one of these houses? <laughs> door opens onto the uh, you know the pavement and mm. then it comes straight in to the room there's there's no there's no hall or, or you know step or anything that's, that's it. It, it, it so we had to change that and the other thing was if you remember it's two rooms it's a uh, a living room and a dining room so we said well where's the bit that juts out because obviously there used to be a wall there so you, you, what happens when you knock it down is you have a bit that juts out. And they, they went, uh, I don't know. I said, well, <laughs> we've got to make it authentic. And because we'd lived it, mm. we could make it authentic. And I think what people 
um, loved about it was that, I mean, the dialogue was essentially just things that uh, people had said in the family, you know, so, uh, you know, things as mums have said and as dad said, mm -hmm. and things that we'd said uh, back in the past and, and friends. So that, I only wrote the first series because I, I, then I went on to, to write a film with Steve and and uh, set up uh, Baby Cow Productions, yeah. but in that first series, um, it was all about you know being as authentic as we could. Yeah, and and and, and just um, and Craig Cash's part in that as well. He, I suppose, he, um, obviously, I don't know him, but he seems like the kind of the sleeping partner in it. He seemed happy to, you know, it, but his 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 um, vocabulary and his and his lines were very subtle, weren't they? And um, but. I've got to say, you know, uh, Craig, all the way through the Mrs. Merton, uh, Mrs. Merton and Malcolm that we uh, we wrote together and uh, the Royal Family. And then, of course, uh, him taking on the Royal Family uh, um, further with uh, Caroline um, was always on the front foot and, and uh, creatively, uh, you know, making stuff happen. Um, so if there's any perception that, that he's not... Uh, fully um you know sort of uh, equal uh, um I, I think that's that's wrong he's he's very much and of course he went on to do uh, early doors which he, he wrote and starred in himself and set up a company called jelly legs uh, who's made some great uh, tv so um uh, i i think strangely enough uh, had we not all met up i think craig would have still have made yeah. it uh, in comedy and, and television um and uh, but luckily uh, you know, we were all in the right place at the right time, and uh, um, so we managed to, uh, to to be quicker. Yeah, and and, and I mean, gosh, is I, I could talk to you all day, um, Henry, because it's just so rich stuff. But but um, Coogan's run was just genius, wasn't it? And 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 kind of I suppose brought Steve to the world on a, on a larger scale and well, from we, there we've done, we've done um we've done paul uh calf video diary before then and then we did pauline calf video diary so so we'd won uh, uh baftas uh, for for those so um we would sort of time we did coogan's run we'd um we'd established ourselves uh, and of course it was steve uh, um, uh, Patrick Marber and myself that uh, that wrote those and, and uh, Coogan's run and Patrick's uh, obviously uh, a great playwright and uh, you know has uh, directed and, and done stuff so again you know you've got three people that were on the front foot uh, you know getting involved creatively um, and I, I'm I'm very pleased with uh, the the shows that we did I think they stand up if you watch them nowadays they still stand up as um, as funny shows yeah and we've not even mentioned um the success of baby cow and productions you know shows like uh, red dwarf and the mighty boosh and um uh, well Gavin of course red, red 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 dwarf was has been going for for years but it's a testament to how far we'd come as uh, baby cow that we were allowed to make a couple of series uh with uh, uh doug uh Naylor, who uh, who uh is the, uh, the the big driving force and creativity behind uh, Red Dwarf and his son uh, Richard, uh, who is brilliant. And I, I was very honoured because I'm a Red Dwarf fan and uh, and I've been watching it since uh, since it started. So to uh, to have to have uh, become established enough that uh, we were trusted with uh, with that um, was a, a, a big uh, honour for me. Um, we started off Baby Cow in 1999. And uh, we were the first, Steve and I were the first comedy producers that were working class Northern and had not been to Oxford and Cambridge. Mm. Uh, um, so uh, quite groundbreaking in a way. And obviously we, we start off with the first two shows we made were Marion and Jeff and um, uh, Human Remains with uh, Julia Davis. Mm. And they both won RTS awards. So um, we were very keen not to start off with a Steve Coogan vehicle because we didn't want the company to be thought of as just for Steve. Yeah. Um, and of course, we made lots of stuff with uh, both um, uh, Julia Davis and, and Rob Bryden after that. And um, so that, that put us in good stead. 
I was just and, uh, I, think, about... I think probably the probably the most famous thing we we did was uh, um, well two things uh, one would be, well three things one would be uh, Gavin and Stacey uh, and uh, another would be Philomena as a film and uh, Alan Partridge as uh, the film yeah and you mentioned Julie Davis and and Nighty Night was just just hilarious I've got the I've got the DVDs up there on my, on my yeah. show just, Julie Julie Davis well, great about well, she was, um, I, I don't know, I, I kind of look for the genius in people. She's a special lady as well, isn't she? Uh, well, she, um, sometimes with a script, you, you want to zhuzh it up a bit and you go, you know, push it further. Mm. With uh, Julia's, it was always a question of, oh, my goodness, are we going to be able to get away with that? <laughs> and, you know, you, you try... Uh, um, uh, unsuccessfully most of the time to, to pull it back a little bit uh, um but uh yes yeah, she was uh, and and uh, would do things write things and and have uh, uh, scenes and characters that um you know are, 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 are sort of so outrageous that um uh, but all done um very realistically and very brilliantly um, yeah. So I, I'm I'm especially fond of, uh, of Julia, and of course, um, it, it, Human Remains. We actually had uh, Ruth Jones in that. So uh, right from the beginning of, uh, of um, Baby Cow, we you know we were building, if you might think, a, a new community of, uh, of people. Uh, in the way that in Manchester we'd had this community of you know Steve and Caroline and John Thompson and. Uh, you know, uh, Dave Gorman and uh, Chris Addison, and lots of people have built up into a community. Uh, with Baby Cow, we were building up this community of um, of great writers and and uh, actors. Yeah, and and you you walked away from it, Henry. That right? You you decided to. What what was your thoughts behind that? Was it that you just made enough money, or you just you, uh, you well, just needed I, a break? I, I, I've got an autistic son, uh, mm. and uh, he's twenty three now, so. Um, I want uh, to be part of um, the own family life with uh, my son Johnny and my wife. Um, and uh, the running of a business that's made huge amounts of television, um, you know, and I had to commute to London every day, uh, it's quite difficult to, uh, you know, then have any energy. Um, so as, as I was getting older, and uh, as we'd made Philomena, which made £150 million pounds worldwide, I thought, I've probably peaked. <laughs> uh, so I, I thought, well, I might as well go back to my first love, which is uh, poetry, uh, and uh, I can do that at home. Uh, and uh, then I can, uh, you know, spend more time with uh, Johnny and Angela and, uh, you know, um, uh, and see me house, which I've got, and my garden, and uh, uh, have a look at the sea and, and uh, just, you know, enjoy life. Yeah. I mean, if I made 451 programmes, I don't think anybody would notice the difference. No, no. And, and um, I just want to ask you about comedy now, Henry. I mean... Um, I was trying to encourage my daughter after a conversation last night to give Only Fools and Horses a go, which was oh, yeah. very, very much in that classic uh, sitcom yeah. kind of. Do, do you think sitcom is, is dead in that regard now? I can't remember a really good sitcom. No, no, no. no the, the, the people have said this since the 70s. That no, no, no. Um, I, I'll give you two examples of two brilliant uh, comedies on at the moment. I, I don't call them sitcoms. I call them narrative comedies. Okay. Because uh, uh, sitcom as a form used to be with an audience, mm -hmm. uh, um, but we, we tend to make films nowadays uh, because people are, are more savvy in terms of film. So um, I would say Ghosts is one of the best uh, comedies on television, and um, uh, Homer is Normal uh, is another great uh, um comedy on television so uh now if you go on to all the other channels like netflix and amazon there's some great stuff knocking about on those um you know so uh, i would say that it's thriving uh, as uh, comedy there was a big change uh, um at the time i i left in the the dvd market um collapsed so people started downloading and uh, the old industry geared up for downloading so the that took a bit of a blow for a while with people adjusting and a lot of people who made comedy 
then went into making drama because drama you can sell to more countries than you can sell comedy. In terms of comedy, it's only the English speaking uh, countries that you sell to. So, uh, you know, Australia, Canada, um, uh, the Scandinavian countries and uh, England and Ireland, whereas in, in America, of course, uh, whereas if you make a drama that seems to travel to you know south america africa asia mm. um so people make more money doing that so a lot of people who were making comedy moved into drama and that's what baby cow did uh, they moved into into drama they still make a few comedies but they, they're geared up for films and drama yeah and do you miss it no <laughs> <laughs> In a nice, nice simple answer uh, now do you know i miss the people uh, uh, because I, I work with some lovely people and, and some very dedicated people and passionate people and uh, and I miss the camaraderie and I miss being part of the team and I, I miss uh, um, uh, the laughs uh, that we had and the the human connection mm. um, but the the actual um, stress of the work if you've got to imagine I, I was the boss so I had to keep it all going and um, uh, and that can be hard so uh, I don't miss that no Henry, it's been fabulous talking to you. I, I've, I've loved every minute of it. I, like I said, comedy is my bag, and, and um, you, you are one of the the giants of, of that of that genre. So th thank you for your time. And and uh, you start off on Darwin, and a good chance to plug the shows. You're all over the country, aren't you? I am all over the country. I, well, I'm, I'm mainly in the north uh, because obviously that's where uh, a lot of people have, uh, have heard of me. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so it'll be uh, Sale, uh, Morecambe, Darwin, and, and then um, uh, I do some Yorkshire. I'm, I'm going over the border to, to Yorkshire and doing uh, Barnsley and Halifax. And, and then, as you say, uh, all, all over the place. And uh, um, I shall enjoy it, but I shall also enjoy uh, uh, getting home. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll go well, and I'm sure your stories will be as fascinating as this interview has been. So, Henry, thanks so much for coming on the Godcast, Godcast and we wish you all our best. God bless. Thanks a lot. Cheers.